All right, welcome to this video. I'm going to be doing a basic video about statistics and basically how to organize your data. And I think this is important to get a very conceptual view here of uh, statistics uh, because if we can't understand the basics of statistics, you can't go forward and, and set up these tests, right? And really, when we're talking about statistics, you really have three values that you're looking at. Okay, if you're talking about a basic z score, which I'm going to do here. You're basically talking about three basic values here that you're com that are important. Okay, the first value here is called the population mean. I'm just going to call it pop mean to summarize that, and that is the mean value that you're going to compare everything else to. Okay, and that's of a large sample of a large population. Then you're going to have something called the sample mean, and this is what you're going to measure. and you're going to compare your sample mean to your population mean. And the whole point of statistics, really, if you just really wanted to summarize statistics, you, you would ask yourself uh, a basic question here. Are these two values different? And that may seem like a very simple concept. Well, of course they're different. If they're different, they're different. Well, in statistics that's not always clear, right? I mean, we have we have blurry data, right? We have we have standard deviations. If these two numbers are different, it doesn't mean that they're different. Okay? I just want to clarify that because in math, if you have two different numbers, they're different, right? There's they're diff they're different. It's obvious, they're a discrete value, they're different. But in statistics, they're not necessarily different. If these two values are close, they're not necessarily different. Okay, so statistics is, is how do we know? Okay, so t t statistics, excuse me, statistics, I like to say a lot of times, statistics is doing a photo finish. Okay. So what in the world do I mean by that? Well, what is a photo finish? Well, have you ever watched the, the horse races or track and field when they're running a race and it's so close that you cannot tell who won the race, right? That's what statistics is for. When I have two values that are really, really different, you can, you know, most of the time you can look at them and say, okay, they're they're different. But when you have two values that are really close together, how do you know they're different? How do you know? I mean, what if what if you have an average value? What if you have a population mean here, and your sample mean is 99? It's pretty close to that, and you had a wide variance in your data. How do you know they're different? They may not be different. Okay, so that's the whole point. So I think of statistics as being like a photo finish. When these two values are, are close, we say that they're different. Um, now, the third line that we're going to use here is going to be our alpha value. Okay. And this is basically, I like to think of this as the yes, the yes, no line to determine if these two values are different. So are these two values different? Well, if that sample mean gets on the other side of this alpha alpha line, they're different. If it's on the inside of this alpha line, we can't say for sure that they're different. We could say that they look different, but our confidence is not as high. So the alpha value is a yes-no line, but I just want to clarify something. It's a yes-no line as a percent, okay? So like we can only know, like for example here, if I choose an alpha value of 0.1, that's a 10% chance you're wrong. So you're, this, this yes, no line, by the way, is going to be a 90% confidence. You never know for sure. So that's the other thing about statistics that's weird. We can say that they're different, and we basically have to define this before. You basically have to say, I want to prove that they're different, and I want to be 90% confident that they're different. Okay? So when this sample mean gets on this side of this red line, we can say, yeah, they're different. If it hits that line, we can say, yeah, I'm 90% sure they're different. If it's on this side of it, nah, we're not really, I'm not, that's not good enough, right? That's not good enough. Eh, that's kind of sketchy. They might be different, but they're not really. But when we get on this side of this line, yes, they're different. If it's right on that line, yeah, they're 90% different. Okay. So the alpha value 
is actually going to be uh, the the you know one a hundred percent minus or sorry the alpha value is going to be um, the, the chance that you're wrong there's a ten percent chance you're wrong there's a ninety percent chance you're right okay so that's I just want to start with that. I mean, that's all that statistics is. That's it. That's it. That's the conceptual view of it. Okay. Um, and it gets so lost in you know the the minutia of all the formulas and the values and the different applications. And there's you know there's all these different tests depending if you're doing a z-score, a t-score, difference of means, you know, population proportion. I mean, there's all these different ways. But in the end, this is really what statistics is about. Okay. Are they different? And when they're really close, it's it's hard to tell. Okay, now that's the first concept. The, ne the next concept I want to talk to you about is I want to I want you to think about this information here as a unit. Okay, so I wrote these here together. This is going to be my population mean. I want you to think of these values as a unit. All three of these, a unit. Here is my mean. This is my true value across here. It's a hundred meters. Okay. Let's just say that this is the distance that a certain number of people could walk in a certain number period of time. It's 100. The average population walked 100 meters in that time. Now this is called the z-score here. This is the at, this is the number of standard deviations that a, a, a true value or a measurement is away from the mean. Well, obviously, if you're on the mean, the z-score is zero because you're not you're not deviating from that mean. So that's always zero. Then you find what's called a p-value, which is the probability here of all of the area running to one side or another. If you're in the middle, it's 50%. So I have down here, I have a table. And this table, which I'm going to get to in a minute, basically tells you the probability of your either, you know, up to, to the left side. In this case, we're going to do a left tail test, right? Okay. I want you to think of these three things together because when we're comparing data, we don't really compare the data. We don't say 100 meters versus whatever the sample mean is. We, we're comparing the z-scores. So the z-scores here, this is what we would call normalized data. Now, why do we need to do that? Why can't we just compare? Let, let me give you an example here. Let me say that this, this sample mean, in other words, when I measure the sample mean, I said, OK, well, when I measure the sample mean, the, you know, the average number of people were only able to walk 99 meters in that amount of time. Okay, all right. So I want to basically say, well, did they walk less? Let's just say than than the the population mean. Did they walk less? Well, 99 versus 100 kind of looks like they walked less, but do we really know because it's close, right? And when it's close, we got a photo finish, and we really don't know, right? And that's going to be determined by how large our deviation is about our data. How large how large is our dispersion about this, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to basically give you some values here. I'm going to basically tell you that the z score here was one standard deviation away from the mean here. In other words, 99 is one standard deviation away. I'm going to tell you that right now. And so again, I want you to think about this information here. This is a unit of information all together. Okay, all together. Just think about this as three pieces of information. Just telling, you know, it's 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 all. It's basically we're converting this. We're thinking of the true value, the z-score, and the p-value, all as one thing. Really, how we communicate and how we compare is through the z-score. When we have a z-score, we're speaking the same language. Okay, it's kind of like in chemistry. Once we get down to moles, we're speaking the same language, right? We're speaking we, like we don't care about grams. We don't care about liters of a gas. We care about the moles. Now I can do the stoichiometry if it's if it's chemistry. And when I set up chemistry equations, it's very much like this. When I set up the stoichiometry, I just make a table on right underneath the equation. I don't do all that dimensional analysis that runs five pages long. I just start writing out the data as we have it. So when I know that this is one z-score away, I can, now I'm getting a little closer. Now I can start comparing these things based off of this normal curve. So I have to go down here to my uh, to my z-score here, right? So I go down to this table. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look on this table. It's going to basically tell me the area or the probability to the left because I'm doing a left tail test here. I want to see if that value was less, right? And now I know I don't worry about 99 meters versus 100 meters, right? I'm just looking at the z score. Z is negative 1. And I, and I gave that to you. I'm going to kind of speed this calculation up. So I'm going to look on this graph here. 
This is the z-score, okay? This is the z-score down here that I'm going to look for. And this is the probability. This is the p-value, this or. The p-value is area. Probability is area, okay? I don't, not, it may seem kind of mysterious to you, but if I have a circle and I'm throwing darts, let's just say at a circle, okay, if you're playing the game of darts, and I want to know what's the probability that the dart lands in there, it's the area of that's it's the it's the the fraction of the area of that circle divided by the area of the total circle. It's just the area. Probability is area. Okay, so I want to know the area under this curve for that z-score to the left of that curve. So I'm going to go down to a z-score of negative one. Take a look at this. I know that with a standard deviation of negative one, my p-score is 0.1587. Okay, so again we're thinking about this as one unit. So point. 1587. Now what p-score is this? This is the p-score of my sample mean. Okay, We know the p-score of the population mean here is 0.5. It's exactly half the values, right? But as I move away from that, okay, this is the chance that I'm wrong. The p-value again, this is the chance, this is the probability that I'm wrong. Okay, So this is the probability that I'm wrong. That you are wrong. It's the probability of a type 1 error, which we'll talk about that later, but it's the probability that you're wrong. So what's the probability that you're right? Well, if that's about 0.16, right, it's about an 80, 80, it's about an 84% chance that you're right. But what standard did you set for yourself? Okay, so the sample mean is you're about 84%, let's just say about 84% chance that you're right. That they're different. You're pretty sure, right? That's pretty good, right? Is that good enough? I mean, what kind of a standard did you set for yourself? Well, you want to be 90% sure that they're different. Oh, okay. So based off of this, can you really tell if they're different? No, you can't. You cannot tell if they're different. In other words, if you're in here, you can't tell that they're different. So in other words, your p-value is your p-value of your sample mean is greater than the p-value of that alpha level. So therefore, you can't be sure. You can't be sure that they're different. That they're different. Now, if we're getting into statistical terms, we would basically say that you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that's. I'm going to get into that later. I'm going to show you how to define that and how that works. But you failed to define the null because they're not. You can't be sure that they're different. Well, what would happen if I went another standard deviation out here? Let me just let me just give you another example out here. What if you took another value out here? Let's just say that you had another sample mean. And I'm going to give you a little hint here. It's going to be to this side of the alpha value, right? Okay. So probably there's a difference, but let's just prove this, okay? Let me just explain this to you. So one standard deviation was one meter, right? Okay. So I'm going to give you a new sample mean here. Let's say we took another study. Someone else took a study. And um, that average group of people was able to walk 98 meters. And that z-score is now going to be negative 2. So now, can I say that th that they walked less than the average? Can I say that? I don't know. Let's find out. Remember, we got to think about all this information as a unit here. Okay. And I'll put my p-value there. It's kind of there on its own, but the p-value is my yes/no line, right? Okay. Let's take a look down here. So z-score of negative two. So before I looked at negative one, right? Negative one was here. Let's take a look at negative two here. Here's negative two. There it is. So 0 0.0228. 0 0.0228. So 0 0.0. Uh, give me some space here. Let me just erase that. 0 0.0228. That would be my p value of this sample mean. okay. 
Now let me ask you a question. The probability that you're wrong, what's the probability that you're wrong? Only a 2.28% chance you're wrong. So P of X now, in this case, the probability is now less than your alpha value. In other words, what's the probability that you're wrong? Well, the probability that you're wrong is about 2%. What's the probability that you're right? Well, you're probably now, you, you know, your new sample mean, let's just say that you're 98 meters. Those people could walk 98 meters in that amount of time. Now your sample mean is about, I'll say about 98% accurate. That's pretty good. Now you're 98% sure that these two numbers are different. In other words, this green line is different than this, this purple line. You're, you're pretty sure now, right? Okay, that's pretty good. And so you set this value for yourself. It may seem like an arbitrary value, but you basically said, I want to be 90% sure. How sure are you? You're 98% sure. Okay. So therefore, what you can do is you reject the null. And you are about 98% sure, sure that they are different. Now, there's always a chance that you're wrong, right? And that's the whole thing about statistics. You never know 100% if you're right. So there's about a 2% chance you are wrong. Okay, and that's the chance of a type 1 error, basically, a type 1 type one error chance. And we'll talk about that later, but a type 1 error is basically the same thing as a false positive. So there's only a 2% chance that you're wrong and that's a false positive. In other words, you're basically saying, yes, if they could only walk 98 meters, that's definitely less than the population mean. And there's only a 2% chance that I'm wrong. That's a coincidence, by the way, that that 98 was about the same as the error. It's just a coincidence. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of go over that just to kind of give you a background on statistics because, you know, it's really not, it's not that, the concept is not that difficult. And it really, if we can't understand the concept, we can't really go forward with all these applications. And I, and I hope you can see that all we're trying to do is basically define whether two values are different, whether, there's basically three ways we can look at this. Are they different? Is one less than, is one, or is one more than? Now, in, in future videos, I'll talk about how you can set up your, uh, your alternative hypothesis, your null hypothesis, depending upon the test. Uh, and, and how to do that. But this was basically just to give you an overview on, on the basic conceptual application of statistics and how it works and how you can make decisions based upon this. All right, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.